Hello everyone, uh, I'm back after a supremely long hiatus from looking at The Witness. Um, so I wanted to do like a fairly short video today, so I figured I would look at the Zen Temple area. Um, it's not an area that I necessarily have a lot of concrete points to make about, um, so... I'm not sure this will be the most enlightening video that I've done thus far, but um, there might be some things that I can point out here. Um, you know, at the basic setup, uh, the Zen Temple sort of faces the ocean and not the uh, not the kind of center part of the island. If you come at it from the center, then you won't be able to get in there. So it's kind of interesting just in that sense, I guess, that it encourages you to explore around to the other side because you'll run up against this gate. There's also, of course, another path through the mountains there, but you'll also run up against a closed back end of a gate. <laughs> um... So that's a couple things that are interesting there. Um, one thing I, I was thinking about in terms of the previous videos that I did um, is that I don't really cover the vaults very much, uh, or at all. Um, at least I don't think I have. <clears throat> so maybe I'll talk about that. Um, so there's like a few different things that are interesting about this area. You know, for one, it's, as far as I know, well, I guess the desert is kind of similar, um, but it's one of the one of these areas that kind of, you know, explicitly starts you with something that you won't have any clue how to do until you figure out the core idea of the area, right? So you're kind of required to guess what the core idea is or notice what the core idea is. Um, So there's like a bunch of things here that seem to be unrelated, but then be then end up related. Um, so that's, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. So this area starts with something that sort of implies the core theme, which is this uh, hole in the wall that you have to do a puzzle through. It's interesting that there's these wooden pieces here, um, which could have possibly been over this hole to patch it up. Although there's also wood pieces here and none there, as far as I can tell. Um, yeah, they also might just be shingles from the roof. Um, it's actually hard to see the roof from down here, but... Um, can uh, do this to fly up there and look at it. Uh, yeah, so I think they're roof shingles that have just fallen down. So okay, so um, so yeah, you start by you know having to look through something to do a puzzle, and uh, it's of course a very basic puzzle. And then the area has two doors that have to both be open to get inside so I'm not entirely sure what that's meant to imply other than uh, there's multiple layers that you kind of need to unravel to the truth I feel like the the this area references a lot of things about the game including kind of the second layer aspect of the game which I generally haven't talked about in these videos because I try to keep the focus more on the puzzle panels and then maybe later cover that as a separate topic um plus it makes it to where you can kind of just watch the videos if you've just done that area um without having anything spoiled so i won't really talk about that directly but i will say that it does tie into some of the broader themes of the game that there would be multiple doors of perception i suppose so once you get in here, there's like a whole bunch of stuff that's just kind of compacted right in here that doesn't really have 
anything you can do with it at this point. So um, that's an interesting approach as well. Um, the uh, there's a this large tree kind of bursting through here, and then a smaller kind of bonsai version of that tree. Um, you know, this is a puzzle that's fairly easy to solve, um, but somewhat difficult for you to solve again, I guess, because you could very easily solve it this way and have solved the puzzle with nothing happening. Um, so you kind of would have to guess or intuit that you could solve it multiple ways. Now I do notice at this point that there are multiple wires that come out of this pedestal here. Uh, which would be another way for you to notice that perhaps there's multiple ways that it could be solved. Um, it's interesting that the wires don't come out at the corners here. Um, the wires come out this way on the sides of this pillar. Um, I guess that makes sense. Because you can solve at the end here, there, and that's a different solution even though it's the same ending. So you'd have to figure out that you can open these different sides of this building by uh, solving that multiple ways before you could ever figure out how you were supposed to do these, right? Um, like once you figure that out that you can actually even open these doors, then it should be fairly easy to notice that this thing looks pretty similar to a puzzle shape. And although you might not notice that you can align it, uh, exactly there, and you might not notice that you can trace through there, which I would, I would add that probably the reason that, well, probably the reason that this panel here is so far back from the door here versus, um, or from the wall here versus this one, uh, is to kind of hint at the idea that you can solve those from further back. Of course, it looks like it's been knocked back a little bit by all this crumbling here. And I'm not sure if this is crumbled because a tree grew up through it or what. Well, I guess it's not a tree growing up through it. It's a tree growing out. So it's possible that the tree growing out through there is intended to have crumbled that. Um, but not exactly clear. So yeah. So not only is it like this, this tree, but it's got these like pillars come down from the tree. Got like one, two, three, four, five of those. Anyway, um, so obviously a lot of players will come up to this and figure out that shape, or they may not even realize that it aligns with that, but they'll figure out that um, it's kind of that shape, and then they'll run out here and solve it. Especially if they haven't figured out they can do those panels from farther away. Um, I think it was this. This. So, this is one of those sets of puzzles that kicks you back if you just are guessing, because it's actually, I mean, it's fairly possible that you could just guess that without even ever figuring out that you could open this wall, but pretty unlikely that you're then going to also guess this puzzle, um, and that one, right? So, you could do it, but pretty unlikely. Um, so in this case, I think, you know, there's a few different things going through like your thought process as you're um, looking at this puzzle. You know, first you might try to line up the center again because you're like, okay, well that was where it was last time. Um, and then you'll have to notice, oh, okay, like I would line it up here, actually not there, right? Um, you know, and then you're probably standing back here and you might just be like, okay, well, I, I guess it can, this can go either way, so which way do I do it, right? So then you're going to do all of this and find out that that's wrong. <laughs> um, so usually that's what happens, I would say. Most people are probably going to not reconsider whether or not they know what they're doing until it's clear that they didn't. Um, 
So if you step up closely, of course, you can notice, oh, well, these are like splintered off. And maybe you just guess kind of, oh, well, maybe I'll guess that where it goes. But uh, there's also the pieces are on the floor here, right? Which that'll play in later in the area, of course, that idea. But you might not notice that. You might have just guessed and be like, okay, well, I guess it was sticking out there and there, so I do this, right? And that's good enough. So I think the reason that this one is um, blocked off, uh, besides just that it you know makes it harder, is that if you were solving them through the panel this way the whole time and were aware that you could do that, then this one's going to require you to actually use your kind of mental projection skills of where does the thing end up, right? Um, because you've probably figured out you can do it through there on this one. I mean, maybe not. Maybe you've just written it down and then came out here and done it. Um, and of course, now we're looking at it from the wrong way, so you have to remember that you're mirroring it, so you're going to do it this way, I think. Okay, yeah. So, that, uh, that wire splits off here and goes back inside power some more puzzles, and also opens this gate into this area. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting that there's actually a gate there to open this up. I would say this is probably for a couple reasons. One, it clearly doesn't give you any access through here, so you don't have a shortcut, but it does imply that there's a shortcut here if you haven't found it, and implies that there's another puzzle here. So <clears throat> you might learn that by getting in here. Um, even though you can see it through there, you'd be more likely to notice it. Uh, it gives you a reward of access to a new area, um, whereas kind of part of the idea of this area is that you never really get access to anything new. It's, it's all in this compact space. You continually are discovering and unlocking uh, new things in there. Um... <clears throat> There's a lot, I was, I was kind of thinking about the, um, you know, the way in which you're looking through stuff at other things uh, to reveal something. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not quite sure why the area has a, a, a Zen temple and Zen garden theme, other than there's sort of this concept in Zen garden design called Miegakure, um, which there's also a puzzle game and development called that, but it stands for hide and reveal. Um, and it's essentially, that's the way in which the entire island has been designed in this game is by that philosophy <clears throat> of, <clears throat> you know, sort of you're moving through a space and it's very well controlled what you can and can't see from there. So that you're, you're sort of intrigued to go through something like say let's go over to the, the woods over here you know it's like well I can see there's a path down there but I can't really see where the path goes and so maybe I'll follow the path down here and oh there's like this little thing here and that's interesting you know maybe I'll look at that and <clears throat> as you're going through it's very you know it's very controlled like I can't see what's over here so I'm sort of kind of oh, okay there's a panel here oh oh you know and now you're like in a whole different feeling of an area and so you're sort of surprised as you're traveling through the space <clears throat> in that way. And so I think the fact that it's a Zen temple may be intended to be a nod to just that overall um, design language of like a Zen garden. Um, there's also a little bit of that with that uh, opening up that back area here. <clears throat> so I wanted to say about opening this up, right? It's pretty clear that you don't get access to anything else um, by getting in here. Uh, you do have to have solved this stuff because you might... It's possible you could solve this before you did any of this area. Um, and then that would just get you halfway access to a shortcut. Um, <clears throat> so it does kind of put two halves on the shortcut that you need to actually have figured this area out a little bit. But it also just rewards you in a way with um, 
with just something new to look at. You know, oh, here's a new thing to look at. And it gives you kind of a break from just doing the puzzles of this area. Um, and so you can kind of go back in here and then do the rest of these puzzles. <clears throat> so... Let's say about these. So these sort of end up being like a variation on that same idea of, you know, looking through something but in this case of course the thing that we're looking through is very different it's it's these branches um so you just kind of have to find a way through it's also like a little less clear because you're you're dealing with the leaves here right it's like a little bit less clear exactly when you have it lined up um you just kind of have to find a spot where there is a path that you can go through it um, and this next one's a bit of a tricker because it's, you know, you're thinking that maybe you're going to look through that same thing from the other side, um, but actually you need to go over here and look through these uh, sticks over here that I believe are actually quite different in terms of how they're cordoning off parts of the panel. Oh dear be failing to find the spot here. Is it right here? Is this where it is? No, that ain't it. That's not quite working there. Hmm. Well, I know that I look at it through over here. Maybe I need to go way further back. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's a bit tricky because you have to find a much further back spot to kind of compress the depth of that. Um, so like just noticing it is not good enough either. You have to <laughs> find the spot. It's a lot harder to find the spot than this where you pretty much just stand in front of it and it's fine. So here you kind of have to stand off at a weird angle and it's a different thing that you're using. Um, so like a lot of things in the game, it's sort of interesting that there's like multiple kind of layers there to the puzzle. Um, there's the layer here of noticing, okay, well, this is not going to work, right? Because you're like, okay, well, can't really find a spot where I can draw through there. Um, so then there's the layer of, like, noticing this, and then there's, like, the layer of figuring out where you have to line that up um, with kind of the round bit around there. Um, So then we move over here, and this, I think, is, yeah, so this, again, is kind of going to, it's tricking you in that the, you're no longer dealing with something that's blocking your path, you're dealing with something that's actually, like, drawing what the path would be, which means, of course, you can't draw while looking at it anymore. You just have to remember that it's, okay, two over, two up, and around, and like that, so, two over, two up, around. And then like that. Yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, it's like uh, there's just a lot of stuff that you have to just kind of figure out with these, I guess. Um, for each one. Each one's like figuring out a whole new kind of way of thinking about it. Um, and there's like some hidden information with pretty much all of these. Um, and this one's probably the toughest in regards to the hidden information. Now, of course, you might again get stuck thinking, all right, well, maybe I got to do this again, right? But there's not really anything that lines up. And so it's like, okay, so there's another stick here. And you can hopefully find, it's probably hard to see on the actual video here because it's so dark, but you can hopefully find this little knot here, right? And line that up but that leaves you with this big gap here in the middle of, well, does it, what does it do, right? And there's a bunch of branches on the top, so it's really hard to tell. So, you know, of course here, you've got the hidden information. If you've done this area, you would know that uh, already, but this one's definitely a big hidden information thing, right? And so then it's like, okay, well, where's that broken off of, right? It's actually kind of hard to tell where it's broken off of, and so I think think, if I recall, it's really just a matter of this shape will only fit on the end of one of these 
uh, in a way that makes sense, and I think it's this one. Yeah, if I recall correctly. Because you've got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, a length of four, and if we go here, one, two, three, four, that goes through that line. If we go here, one, two, three, four, that's fine. Uh, if we go here, hold on. One, two, three, four. Is that four, really? One, two, three, four. Yes, okay. Two, three, four from the end of that up there. Again, hard to see because it m matches up with that. So there's only really one spot where that can actually fit in, and then it connects in there, so... So that is over two, down two, and then up and around like this. And then we go one, two, three, four, like that. Um, so that pretty much does it for the puzzles in that area. It's a very small area that doesn't have a lot of puzzles, but there's a lot of hidden information going on with this area. Um, that's kind of one of the big themes of it, right? Is that there's some observation that you need to make like it's very much about just making the observations and looking at your environment and seeing if there's any clues hidden in the environment that would help you um so yes yeah, so that pretty much gets us the laser already um so there's a couple other things that oh, sometimes when i when i bring up ansel it will uh mess up the LODs and stuff like that will happen, so. <laughs> That's why it's not really a great idea to do that. Um, let me go back over here and then, like, pull up here and then pull back down here and then maybe it will help that. Let's see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's some weirdness with the, like, LOD system when you, uh, that fly around um because i think it shuts off the like lod stuff but it doesn't it, it adjusts your position in some way um so there's a few things here that i'd like to talk about that are a little more spoilery um i don't usually talk about that stuff but there's a bit more of it here than there are in most areas so uh if you don't really know some of the more secret things about this area in terms of, like, things that you might notice, uh, then you might want to shut the video off, and we'll call it at that. But if you do know those things, then watch on, and we will talk about those things. Um, so, of course, one of the, like, things about this area is these hidden things through the walls here that you can look at and find, uh, I can line it up. So you can find these, uh, motifs of the siren here, um, with wings here, if I can line it up again. Yeah, so with wings here, uh, that wings here, and then I think this one's just, just a woman with no nothing magical about her at all, right? Um, so that's that's a motif that actually shows up a lot in the in the game, and uh, of course the main reason for that is a lot of the one of the themes of the game is obsession and um, the way in which obsession can drive people mad or drive people to death, and of course the siren is a symbol of uh, you know, a, a woman that drives obsession uh, and drives sailors to crash into the rocks or whatever and die, right? So it's it's a symbolic representation of that idea. Um, of course, on this wall over here, we've got some other stuff. I don't think there actually is anything on this wall if you open it up. I think it's just a wall. It has to be. So this one, like, has to be closed for you to see what's there. This one has to be open for you to see what's there for sure. Um, as does this one. Um, and so this is the 
It's a man reaching across a broken bridge for the Holy Grail. Um, and now, of course, the Holy Grail is another symbol of an object of attention and obsession um, that drives people crazy or drives people to um, great lengths to pursue it. Um, and of course, this can be representational of search for truth um, and what is the fundamental truth, the objective truth of reality, and uh, it may very well be an unknowable thing. Um, but um, I just wanted to cover that because there's there's a bit more of that in this area in terms of tying into that those thematics than I think there is in almost any other area. Um, I don't I don't necessarily want to say that straightforwardly, but but it's definitely uh, ties into whatever's going on with the theme here. Um, Yeah, there's some other things I could talk about here, uh, I guess. There's some more hidden things, but uh, I think I'll leave those as a exercise for the viewer to think about how those might tie into those same kind of themes. This is like... That step keeps disappearing, but... Um, yeah, and sometimes things might be hidden in uh, reflections or, or whatever. Um, Oh yeah, I guess I should talk a little bit about this uh, vault and the the extra hidden one over here. Extra hidden puzzle. Since it's such a small area, I might as well cover everything that I can about it, I guess. Let me turn that down a little bit. That's overbearing. So, um... You know, of course there's... Uh, puzzle here that you might stumble upon this before you even have done anything else in the area and it's just another puzzle that you have no idea how to do um, and so you would have to kind of either get lucky or be thinking very hard about the theme of that area and being like well there's got to be something that like I've got to look through um, I know when I actually did this I think I might have done this first because um, it's actually a little easier to do this. And then I was just trying to figure out a way to do that. I was like, is there anything from here? Because I was everything in that area, you're always looking through wood uh, at whatever the panel is. And so this one's kind of a tricky one because you're not looking through wood. You're looking through the stone here. Um, figure that out. Um... Those little shortcuts throughout this game are kind of nice because they're, they're something that, in some sense, it doesn't really give you access to anything new, but um, it does create a sense of, like, mastery and uh, of this island, right? You kind of you feel like you've explored more of the island and now you've figured out more and you know new ways to get through it. Um, and so this one here is, again, pretty similar in that you just need to apply what you knew in that area. But there's, like, two things going on with it. One is that it's a puzzle with, like, symbols on it, right? And, of course, if you knew what these symbols mean already from the other areas, then you would be like, okay, well, I just need to, like, draw a line through here, right? That's fine. And, of course, that doesn't work, so that's not good enough. It was actually one of the few, I think, yeah, a few puzzles that, well, yeah, it, it, some, there's a few of the areas that don't really mix in other stuff, but this is one of the few ones that mixes um, an observational type mechanic with the uh, symbol type mechanic. So. I guess what I would say is, um, and this is some of the stuff that was going to go into my overall essay on the game, so I guess spoilers for that if I ever actually finish it, but um, in the game there's generally, I would say, three broad categories of area, of the puzzles in each area. 
So there's areas that are about like direct observation. Um, this is one of those areas. So that means like you are looking at a thing and in this case, it tells you directly what line you should draw, right? Um, I mean, in this case, it's outlining the line, right? Um, there are the type of puzzles that have symbols, which are sort of just a, um, an a abstract mechanical thing, um, and they tell you by virtue of the constraints of those mechanics what line you should draw or what lines you could draw. Um, and then there is a third type, which uh, the jungle is an example of, um, which is an abstraction puzzle. So you've got, in the case of these, um, you've got a bird sound, and so you have to take that and abstract it into a line here, right? So it's like, well, it's a high bird sound and a low bird sound. And so we're abstracting that bird sound into something like that. Another example of that would be the uh, the orchard area uh, near the start, where you are. You've got a tree. It's a physical tree, and then you're trying. You've got like a tree on a panel, and you're trying to abstract the physical tree that might be like twisted or something into this two-dimensional abstract representation of a tree. So. From what I remember, there's not a lot of mixture between the direct observational puzzle types and the representational puzzle types, or between the representational puzzle types and the uh, mechanical constraint puzzle types. Um, they don't tend to mix across those boundaries, but this is an example of where they do, um, where the these... Um, symbolic constraints are mixed with a direct observation thing. So in this case, it's, you know, it's a harder puzzle because you need to know what these symbols mean and you also need to know the rule from that area, right? Now, of course, these are basic symbols. These are symbols that you would have learned near the start of the game. Uh, but, you know, in the, in the case of these... Um, different things that you can look through, you're going to end up with, I think this one you actually might not even be able to draw at all. Oh no, okay, that wraps around there. I think. Okay, so you've got to figure out how to line them up, but then also there's an issue here in that they need to meet the constraints of these mechanics as well, right? These abstract mechanics. So this one, keep like not quite lining it up. But in any case, that one won't work because it doesn't cross through the middle, I don't think. Um, I think there's one here as well. Yes. So this one is actually the correct one because it will separate those shapes and uh, do that. But we're going to look at... There's two more here. So there's this one. This one is actually tricky because it doesn't... Um, quite line up the way that most of them do, right? Like, it doesn't have a very obvious little circular part here that goes around that, like this one does. So I, th I think this one might also work. Yeah, so that one also works. Well, now we're... Now we've already opened it, but... I think this one worked too. Unfortunately, I can't reclose that door to check, but um, that would be an exercise for uh, you, dear listener, uh, to see that. And then there's another one here that doesn't work. So, so I think there's one, two, three, four different ways of looking through there at that um, here. And this one, I'm almost certain works as well as this one. But uh, you can try that at home, and maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'm missing something there. Um, so I think that pretty much all covers it for this area. Um, I guess we should step down in here just to satisfy our curiosity. Um, yeah. 
It's like some kind of dungeon. It's very, very dark in here. But, uh, certainly nice. I'll open this up. You can hear the birds from here, too. Which is interesting. Um, yeah, so... That pretty much covers it for the Zen Temple area. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I actually wanted to say about this area. In terms of its structure or its themes or, or anything. Um, that thing keeps doing that. Uh, but we won't worry about that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's a nice area. I like the area, but it's there's a lot of things going on with it. Um, it's nice that the, the laser also goes through this tree to get to the top of the mountain, which is sort of tying into the, like, um, you know, looking at light passing through an object in order to get at your goal or whatever. It's kind of the theme of the area. Like, to look through something, I guess? I don't know. Uh, I feel like I've not done the best job covering this area compared to some of the areas that I've talked- other areas I've talked about, but, um... You know, I could always revisit it if, if there's some really good insights to be had there. Um, so, uh, thanks everybody for joining. Um, I would say... I'm probably planning on doing more of these because I sort of feel like going back and looking at stuff in depth again. Um, but uh, you know, those won't be on any particular fixed schedule. Um, also, of course, I would take the opportunity to point out that um, I'm making my own game called Taiji, T-A-I-J-I. Uh, you can find that at taiji-game.com um, and keep up with development there. Um, I also live stream development on it sometimes. Uh, less less on schedule than I would like to lately, but I try to do it Tuesdays and Thursdays, generally speaking. Um, and if you like The Witness, you might like Taiji because it's kind of similar in some ways. Um, it's got sort of the same, borrows the same concept of having an abstract uh, grid-based puzzle that you go and explore a world and do uh, puzzles in, but those uh, the nature of those puzzles is different. Um, but anyway, so thanks for watching. I will see you all around on the internet. Have a good one. Bye-bye.